It's been two years since there's been a flagship Lumia on the market. Now we have the Lumia 950. Here's our full review. The Lumia 950 brings a lot to the table in terms of raw specs. Sure, it may not look the part with its matte coat and distinctive lack of metal, but underneath the removable battery cover sits a powerful mobile device by any standards. First up is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 808 Hexacore processor timed at 1.8 GHz. This is a rather large jump in performance from the old quad-core Snapdragon 800 found in the Lumia 930. Next is the ample 5.2-inch 2560x1440 OLED clear black display with Gorilla Glass 3 and an impressive 564 PPI for outstanding color and clarity. The Lumia 950 also packs all the bells and whistles that Windows Phone fans have been clamoring for all in one device. 32 gigs of internal storage, micro SD that can take 200 gigs of expandable storage, high resolution screen with glance, rapid charge and wireless Qi charging, large capacity removable battery, and arguably the best mobile camera to date, it's all here. And you want it to be thin and light? They did that too, as the Lumia 950 weighs only 150 grams, making it one of the lightest Lumias to date. At 8.2 millimeters for thickness, you'd be hard pressed to call this phone big. As a bonus, Microsoft will even sell you this phone direct and unlocked for a reasonable $550. There's even the ability to use this phone like a computer through Continuum, a new feature that no one was exactly asking for, but makes a lot of sense when you consider the future of mobile computing. Did I mention it also has an iris scanner to unlock your phone just by looking at it? Not only is this an impressive feature for Lumia fans, but anyone who's considering a high-end phone as well. The one downside of the Lumia 950 hardware is cosmetic. The phone is rather bland looking. As Apple and Samsung have moved to lots of metal and glass for an elegant premium design, the Lumia 950 box at that with matte polycarbonate plastic. Of course, it's not all bad. The Lumia 950 is lighter because of it, and it doesn't feel like it'll shatter into a million pieces if you drop it. In fact, it feels pretty great to hold and use. This is a phone that you can grab and go with confidence and not coddle it or even have to bulk it up with a protective case. Having said that, the Lumia 950 is definitely not winning any awards for design. Let's take a closer look at three banner features of the Lumia 950. Biometrics for modern computing is the ability to use physical characteristics for security purposes. It's a big trend in mobile and featured prominently in Microsoft's own Windows 10 ads. Microsoft puts its tech under the marketing name Windows Hello, and it includes face scanning, fingerprint reading, and an iris scanner. Fingerprint scanners are the preferred technology for phone unlocking, and it can be found in the new iPhones, Samsung Galaxies, and even HTC devices. For some reason, Microsoft went down the road of an iris scanner for the Lumia 950 and Lumia 950 XL. Using a near-infrared camera, along with the standard 5 megapixel one, the Lumia 950 can unlock your phone just by gazing deeply at the display for a second or two. Once recognized, Windows Hello can dismiss the lock screen automatically. In terms of privacy, Windows Hello does not take a picture of your eyes or irises, nor does it send any information to the cloud. Instead, scanning creates an encrypted hash that is stored on the phone. So is it better than a fingerprint reader? In some ways, yes, but not enough to make it a clear winner either. Besides not having to take your gloves off in the winter, iris scanning can be a little finicky. For instance, you do need the phone about a foot away from your face. You won't look weird using it in public, but you do need to look right at it to unlock. Sometimes it's hit and miss for recognition too, requiring you to use the pin or cycle the display off and on again. However, using the improve feature can help here. But there are some cool things about it that you may not know. For instance, it works in low light and even in the dark. You can wear eyeglasses or even sunglasses when using it. Twins reportedly cannot fool it. A photo of your eyes cannot trick it. And besides unlocking your phone, you can authorize store purchases with it. At the time of this review, Windows Hello is still in beta for the Lumia 950, but it is pretty solid. There are a few quirks here and there, as we have had it stop working on rare occasion, but nothing catastrophic. The great thing about Windows Hello and biometrics is that you can now set the phone to auto-lock every time, ensuring greater security. Putting aside any kinks and iris scanning is pretty awesome. It makes the Lumia 950 feel different and even futuristic. It will certainly be a talking point when you are out with others. Lumia fans have gotten so used to having some of the best cameras around that it is just expected that the Lumia 950 and its 20 megapixel camera would continue that trend. Microsoft's bag of photographic technology is referred to as PureView, and it includes Zeiss lenses, mechanical optical image stabilization, and a high-end flash. The bigger story, however, is how Samsung and even LG have caught up to and even surpassed PureView. The bar has been set, and Microsoft needs to beat it. 
I can confidently say that the Lumia 950 and Lumia 950 XL do have some of the best cameras on a phone, or at the very least, rank in the top echelons. Images are sharp, color is vivacious and accurate, and the new triple LED flash offers natural color where it's needed. The updated auto-rich capture only kicks in when it's needed, and it even lets you adjust the brightness of the flash after you've taken a photo, which is always a fascinating feature. Like a lot of prosumer photographers, I generally loathe using the flash as I prefer ambient light. But between the triple LED natural flash and the ability to control its intensity in post-processing, using the flash is now preferred. The same applies for HDR, which lets you customize the look. The Lumia 950 also incorporates a fifth generation optical image stabilization housing to ensure jitter-free images and assist with video. More importantly, the new Microsoft Camera app and Snapdragon processor finally give fast results both for launching the camera and taking photos rapidly. Even post-processing rich capture images is significantly faster due to those extra cores. I did find focusing a bit nuanced, with some shots coming out with a slight blur when zoomed in. I think this is partially due to the large f1.9 aperture, but also due to the lack of newer IR laser-assisted autofocus technology found in phones like the LG G4 and Nexus 5X. That can make a big difference. Likewise, there are some early bugs with Windows Hello Beta when reviewing an image after launching a camera from when it's in locked mode. There's also the lack of such basic features as built-in panorama, which is borderline egregious in 2015. While Facebook has announced that a Windows 10 Instagram app is on the way, until it's here, users have to use the excellent, but still third-party, SixTag app for Instagram. When it comes to video, the Lumia 950 can handle 60 frames per second for 1080p video, and I've heard through my sources that Microsoft is working on 120 frames per second for early next year. Additionally, you can shoot 25 or 30 frames per second at 4K, which is more common these days, but still impressive. And while Apple acts like they invented living images, we know that it was the Lumia team who originally brought moving photos to the table. The new version works in the Universal Photos app for Windows 10, including on PC, and it seems smarter. Interestingly, living images are now only invoked when movement is detected in the photo, instead of being applied across the board for every photo taken. This feature both saves storage space, and it just makes sense. After all, there's no need for a living image if there's nothing moving in the photo. We'll be doing an in-depth analysis of the Lumia 950's camera in the coming weeks, including comparisons to the Galaxy S6 and the iPhone 6. But here's the question. It's a really good camera on the 950, but does it matter? If you're a mobile camera enthusiast, the Lumia 950 should be on your list of phones to look at. However, since the early days of peer review, it is hard to ignore the fact that Samsung and LG have really caught up in terms of image quality. Even the new iPhones they only consider to be decent for image quality, but they no longer get top awards either. Sure, I can say the Lumia 950 takes better images most of the time, but the differences between it and the competition is a lot less pronounced than it was two or three years ago. In other words, when posting to Instagram or Facebook, both which downsize and downsample images, I'm not sure the Lumia 950 will be noticeably better than other high-end phones. I do think the dedicated camera button is a huge advantage, and I still get frustrated with the iPhone and Android devices that make you use a swipe gesture option. But these are also preferences, and for a lot of people, minor advantages. In the end, the camera on the Lumia 950 is quite phenomenal, and the new algorithms definitely reveal and preserve subject detail better than ever. I'm just not sure it is that big of a deal in 2015 as it was in 2013 when the Lumia 1020 was announced. Continuum for Windows Phone and Windows 10 Mobile is both a fascinating yet odd feature. Microsoft's idea here is that a user can connect their phone up to a larger display and use it like a computer. Universal Windows 10 apps can auto-scale to the large display, and you can even connect a mouse and keyboard up to complete the experience. While the phone powers the display, you can continue to use the phone separately, including making calls and getting charged through the rapid charge system. There are a few ways to use Continuum, including wired through the $99 display dock and wireless using Miracast. In both scenarios, you can use a mouse and keyboard as well. I have to admit that Continuum works very well. I connected the Lumia 950 to a 4K display, but output is limited to just full HD, and used Microsoft's wireless ergonomic keyboard for a test. It was all hands off as everything just functioned. You can even use the phone's display as a mouse pad, which works very well over wired connections. Windows 10 Mobile's universal apps that work with Continuum include Office, Outlook Mail, Microsoft Edge, MSN News, Weather, Sports, and Money, and along with other core apps like Photos, Groove Music, Movies and TV, and Store. Additionally, any third-party apps that use the Universal Windows platform can also be Continuum ready. Our new Windows Central app, which is in private beta, works very well, as do other apps like Tweedium, Homeboy, Fedora, Reader, Baconet, and Tractor, to name a few. Of course, you can't run classic Win32 apps, although who knows what will happen next year. 
Using Miracast to a TV is pretty decent, although if you toss in a Bluetooth keyboard, you may experience some slight lag when typing. You could just use the keyboard on the phone to the TV, which is easier. Depending on your setup, it could be a great experience or a bit of a kludge. Of course, it's easy to sit back and criticize the experience until you take it all in. You're running a PC's operating system from your phone to your TV and using a Bluetooth keyboard and the phone as a mouse pad, at the very least on a technical level. That is impressive. But here's the question that's bugging me. Is anyone actually going to use this? I can certainly envision unique situations where Continuum would be useful. However, I cannot see Continuum being a selling point for your average consumer. This isn't a killer feature for most people. It's a powerful but niche tool. It's also weird since for years all data was to go to the cloud. Continuum seems to buck that by saying, take the device with you. Can I really recommend the Lumia 950 to my friends for Continuum? It seems like a stretch. The thing is, I see the Continuum model being the future. I can imagine a world where our phones are our main computers and everything is just a display. But that world isn't here yet. For now, Continuum is potentially trailblazing, but only in theory. Before we get to my final thoughts, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. Windows 10 and the app gap on Windows Phone. Unfortunately, in late 2015, the app gap situation has in some ways become worse for Windows 10 Mobile. Big banks and popular services are seemingly abandoning the platform. Meanwhile, others like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pandora, and Ring are jumping on board. Windows 10 and its universal Windows platform should fix this, in theory, as developers can basically write once and distribute their apps to PC, tablet, phone, and even the Xbox One. Even HoloLens can now run the popular Reddit Windows app baked in it. The problem is the universal Windows platform has not delivered. Not yet. The app gap is not about numbers. It's about one thing. Can Windows 10 Mobile deliver the apps you need? Everyone has that one app that they desperately like to use. For me, as an MMA fan, I want a universal UFC app. For others, it is Snapchat. It's a tough problem and makes recommending the Lumia 950 very difficult for most users, especially if you're on Android or iOS. Windows 10 Mobile as an operating system is pretty great, but there's still a lot that is missing. Panorama for the camera, no visual voicemail yet for AT&T, no native payment system akin to Apple Pay, and some UI inconsistencies make Windows 10 Mobile feel, well, incomplete. The good news is we don't have to wait six months or a year for a new OS update. Windows as a service means the OS constantly evolves and gets frequent updates. It remains to be seen, however, just how fast Microsoft can push out updates and just what kind of interference, if any, carriers will impose. I really like Windows 10 Mobile and I feel it is the right evolution of the Microsoft design language. The OS is minimal and it still puts heavy emphasis on information and content. However, like all design languages, some people will love it and others will find it off-putting. I'm not quite sure yet what people are going to think of Windows 10 Mobile. So do I recommend the Microsoft Lumia 950? In order to answer that question, I had to break it down to two user groups. Fans of Windows Phone and Windows 10 who are committed to Microsoft's vision and, well, everyone else in the world. If you're already a Lumia user who really likes Windows Phone, then the Lumia 950 is kind of your dream device. In terms of specs and features, it has everything under the hood. Expandable memory, wireless charging, a fast processor, large battery, excellent display, and arguably the best mobile camera yet. And yes, I can report that both the Lumia 950 and 950 XL each have four dedicated rich recording microphones for outstanding audio recording. There are some rough edges, of course. As of now, there's no double tap to wake, although I expect that to be enabled at some point. There's some missing functions like visual voicemail. Windows Hello works most of the time, but still has some quirks, hence the beta tag. I also cannot say iris scanners are definitively better than a fingerprint reader. The rear speaker leaves a lot to be desired in terms of quality, and let's be honest, the overall design of the phone is bland and generic. It's by no means bad, it's just not inspiring. The Lumia 950's design is very pragmatic, like cargo pants. Battery life, I'm happy to report, is very good. If you're on the fence and waiting for something better, I can also say with confidence now that there won't be another high-end phone until late next year. Unless another OEM steps in with an equally specced phone, the Microsoft Lumia 950 and XL will be it. As a longtime Windows Phone user and admirer of Windows 10 Mobile, I have no problem recommending this phone to users. It's a powerhouse of a device and it should be a fun ride as Windows 10 Mobile continues to evolve. But if you are on Android or iOS, should you consider the Lumia 950? It all depends on your thoughts about apps and services. Obviously, if you live to get the best app support with the latest and greatest in mobile, you will have a lot of pain points switching to Windows 10 Mobile. Banking apps are hard to come by, and there is no Snapchat. Even Skype is not a great experience on Windows 10 Mobile, which is shameful. If you are switching for the camera, you will be enthralled. But I know very few people who will do so for that reason alone, not when the competition is just good enough. 
Continuum is very specific, and while it works well, I do not see many consumers jumping ship for that either. Windows Hello in the Iris Scanner is pretty cool, but not any better than the newer fingerprint scanners on the iPhone 6S or Nexus devices. And the Lumia 950 design is practical, but not beautiful. I do encourage you to go see Lumia 950 in person, but in the end, the Lumia 950 is still a tough sell for non-Microsoft fans. The Microsoft Lumia 950 represents the best of Windows 10 Mobile and is 100% built for the fans, which is exactly what Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella promised. It is also just a very good smartphone that can get a lot done with a gorgeous display, excellent camera, and gets very good battery life. But while it is a first-rate phone, it is not the best, which is what's needed in 2015. Microsoft fans will love it, but the rest of the world will likely look on with curiosity and nothing more. I still think Microsoft's vision of mobile is unique and evolving, but they are still kicking the can down the road. Alternatively, Microsoft's aim is just to keep its enthusiasts happy, and from that perspective, the Lumia 950 succeeds. So that's our full review of the Microsoft Lumia 950. Head to Windows Central over the next coming days for more coverage. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Hey Mark, how much are we going to be pretending to talk Two on more. this phone? Two more seconds. Okay, yeah, so uh, anyways.